What's going on internet? IG here again today and uh, clearly in answering my own question there actually does seem to be quite a bit going on. Finally. It seems that almost in a perfect response to this little gem that I uploaded a couple weeks ago uh, it seems that, yeah, the ball is rolling again in the Linux world. So, let's cover some of the recent stuff that has happened in the last couple of days, or last couple of two weeks, basically. Uh, because, yeah, there has been quite a bit. So, starting off with two big distro releases, one which is impending, one which definitely came out. So, OpenSUSE 13.2 recently dropped, and basically, it's just a gentle revision on 13.1 being their more stable long-term support release. And I am liking this trend amongst Linux distributions of putting out a more stable version of their operating system and then slowly incrementally uh, kind of improving on that distribution rather than changing it up crazily and putting out a whole new kind of operating system every 6, 8, 12 months. So it's a good move on OpenSUSE's part to just be gradually innovating and uh, obviously they did change some, th some things and they also have updated to newer versions of KDE, GNOME, LXDE, pretty much every single window manager and desktop environment out there which is great to see. Um, but yeah, definitely check out the release notes that I'll put in the links and as always I'll provide links to everything that I've talked about in the description box below. Uh, now also the second biggest release that is impending, it isn't quite out yet but you can get your hands on the release candidate, is Linux Mint 17.1. 17.1 will be coming very shortly. The release candidate is out in the wild for you to go and test. Obviously don't put it on a production ready system as stability things may not have been worked out yet. But one of the biggest headlining features that I'm loving about the announcement of Linux Mint 17.1 is the idea of Cinnamon 2.4. Now basically this just sounds like a whole bunch of revision numbers doesn't it? Well essentially Cinnamon 2.4 is another fit and polish on the already pretty handy Cinnamon desktop environment. Uh, obviously they're creating more and more of their own desktop environment, adding features and adding polish to a very nice alternative uh, to those who want more power and function out of something like Gnome Shell that still uses the GTK technologies. So with all that in mind, there is again a list of improvements of Cinnamon 2.4 but it's something that I'm very excited to see as they're polishing up things like the settings dialogues, the animations, the frame rates, uh, a whole bunch of memory leaks that they've addressed. These are all things that go into making a desktop environment both exciting to play around with, productive in everyday use and also stable in everyday use and these are three very important things that an operating system should be striving to do at all times. Uh, so yeah, two big distro releases that I'm very happy to see. So moving on from there we go to open source news in general. And that is the interesting development that Microsoft has decided to open source the .NET framework and also then port it over to operating systems such as OS X and also Linux. And this kind of opens up a whole gamut of questions in terms of what is Microsoft's business strategy moving forward? Because it seems like every step that they've taken over the last mm, 6, 8, 12 months uh, has actually been towards embracing other open standards uh, and also making some of their products uh, A, better value and B, in some cases free as well. The recent development of uh, Office, for example, that is now freely available on Android. There is an impending release for Android tablets as well as iOS and obviously iPhones, iPads. Uh, it's free on that as well now. So it is an interesting development for Microsoft embracing kind of more open standards. And funnily enough, I don't exactly know why they have decided to embrace Linux. But it might actually be because of this guy. Now, as a matter of fact, I actually have picked up a job recently as a Microsoft ambassador in a local tech retail store. So that is an interesting opportunity there to kind of delve into what makes up the Microsoft that is here and now. And uh, it's interesting to see some of the corporate shiftings that are going on and uh, the, the fact that they're trying to reinvent themselves and reinvent, reinvent themselves as a much more open company, not one that is uh, as monolithic as the company that we knew coming out of the 2000s. In other open source news, China has also announced that they are planning to transition their software from uh, obviously Microsoft and other solution based systems to open source solutions, mostly Linux based. Uh, so that's an interesting development and hopefully uh, they're, they're planning to roll that out over the next couple of years so by 2020 they'll be pretty much completely independent. That's really just a typical China move in my opinion as far as uh, producing their own solutions in-house that are going to suit what they want their systems to be running like. So 
it, interesting move and obviously seeing Linux in more places is always fun. Uh, but yeah, I'm not honestly that surprised by the move and uh, it's actually mirroring a lot of other governments as well wanting to trim back some costs of operating systems that are developed for themselves specifically rather than uh, using the solutions that are provided by other companies in other countries. So interesting nonetheless, but I guess we'll see how that pans out uh, as we move forward. Okay, so now for the quick distro of the day project. Uh, now, obviously, as you know, on a Linux tidbits, we generally like to have a look at a Linux distro that doesn't maybe get as much exposure as some of the big players. And today that one is going to be Neptune. Uh, Neptune 4.2 to be specific. I am going to be having a full review of that very shortly. Um, but yeah, Neptune 4.2 is a KDE based, Debian based distribution, uh, obviously a rolling release. Um, it's developed to be quite uh, both stable and also very desktop user friendly. Uh, and they also bundle in quite a few media tools which appeal to people like me. Uh, so their hardware support is also pretty good and, uh, and a, they've got a couple of other solutions that they develop in house for some of the other things like driver management and stuff like that. Um, but definitely go check out Neptune 4.2 if you're looking for uh, a very complete all-in-one KDE package. Uh, also the theming on it, I will comment, is very nice and performance is also looking very good at this stage. But I'll get back to you shortly with a full review of that because it's been a while since I had a look at the Neptune OS. So that is our random distro of the day. Let's move on to our random Linux YouTuber. And our random Linux YouTuber of the day is Jay the Linux Guy. Now Jay the Linux Guy has been putting a lot of effort into his videos. Uh, they're mostly tutorial based. There are a few reviews on there as well for you know, obviously the recent releases of things like Ubuntu and Linux Mint, uh, but definitely the, the value of this guy's channel is in his tutorials. He does tutorials like really in-depth lengthy ones, uh, like multiple videos in a series of things like installing Arch Linux, bash scripting, Linux commands, the kind of the bread and butter of, uh, of the Linux world. So whether you're new to Linux or whether you're just wanting to find out a bit more about Linux as an operating system and how it works, then Jay the Linux guy will be able to help you out with uh, playlists upon playlists of different tutorials that will be able to help you out. And also he does have some a couple of reviews on there as well. So definitely go and check him out. Again, links will be in the description below. Well, that'll be all from me in this week's Linux tidbits. Uh, obviously, I've been proven wrong as far as the Linux world being asleep. Yes, it did fall into a bit of a coma there for a bit, but news is rolling again, so this is good to see. Thank you all for watching. If you like what you see here and you want to see more, then definitely click the subscribe button down in the description box below or on that little thing that's hovering above if you've got the uh, annotations enabled. Also, you can feel free to contact me on Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Again, links in the description, and, uh, and obviously I can answer any questions you might have there. We'll try and be a bit more consistent with posting content to this channel. Uh, obviously, more Linux reviews coming up, and also I'm wanting to delve back into Android a bit, uh, and also maybe a couple of device reviews, as my tech situation has recently changed. Uh, so I'm now running a the same Dell laptop that I've always had, the Dell XPS 15 LX, L502X, uh, a Surface Pro 3, a Moto X for my daily driver and my mobile phone. So that's all pretty exciting stuff, and I think I've still got an iPad in there as well. Anyway, that'll be all from me, guys. Catch you later. bunches of them on DistroWatch, but for the, for the large part, and I know this sounds bad, so don't take it the wrong way, but I really don't care. I mean, unless...